The Tories were on the defensive yesterday after the Prime Minister's D-Day gaffe. So they announced plans to put benefit reform at the heart of their election campaign. I don't know if one thing followed the other, it might have done. Rishi Sunak has pledged to cut £12 billion from the welfare bill. The way he plans to do it is by limiting people being able to claim benefits by citing mental health, such as depression and anxiety. Spending on benefits for people of working age who have a disability or health condition is expected to rise from £69 billion to £90 billion in the next four years. So let's just have a look at this, because it's quite interesting, <clears throat> because we have a situation where not everyone who is economically inactive is considered unemployed. Here's a crowd of people, all right? And I'm, I assembled 67 people, okay? And you've got to imagine each person represents one million Brits. So that is the UK population right there, 67 million. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take out the under 16s, let's cross them out, and the people who are 65 and over. So we now have 42 million people. We have basically the working age population, aged, what is it, 16 to 64. There they are. And now I've got to do something which is slightly strange. I'm going to take a red pen and I'm going to blob out a number of them. So that gentleman, her, that's three, four, five, six, seven, red pen, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven people blobbed out. Why? Because they aren't working. There we are, numbers one to eleven. So even though they're in the working age population, they're described as economically inactive. There are 11 million of them. And let's use that asterisk to add this important thing. It does not necessarily mean they're unemployed because there may be reasons you're not working and also not looking for a job. And I give you a kind of a classic example here. Let's imagine somebody, you know, made squillions, right, by the age of 35, Carl the banker, and they're always going to do for the rest of his life is sit there burning dollar notes. That's what, that's what he's up to now. So he's an example of somebody who you wouldn't call him unemployed. He's not working. He's economically inactive. But of course, Carl is not a very good example. The unemployed represent only a small part of the nearly 11 million working age people. About 9 million of them are not called unemployed because they're not actively looking for work or available to start a job. Carl's not a great, let's cross out Carl. Because a lot of people who are not economically inactive are not economically active for reasons that they've got loads of money. It's for other things. And we can have a look at now some of the reasons. So the main reasons for economic inactivity, you may well be sick. You may be caring for someone. You may well be a student. That's an awful lot of people. Some people have retired early and some people are discouraged. They just feel like I can't get back in. And what's worrying the government is this graph here. Post-COVID, Everyone else's rates were falling. Economically inactive, but not unemployed. UK going up. And particularly the government looking at this, the sick column, and saying, how many young people have we got in there? Because we can't surely be funding loads of young people who've got depression and anxiety with benefits. And that's essentially it, isn't it, Ava? Well, I think what you've pointed out is really important about what the, the distinction of economically inactive, because it's actually very disingenuous from the Conservative Party. So basically what they've said is they don't want to tax people anymore. They also don't want to spend anymore. They're going to recoup all of the money for their fantastic new projects after the election by cracking down on people who aren't contributing to the Exchequer. This is an example of how ridiculous that idea is and proof that you're only going to see further stagnation with another, if, you, if we have another Conservative government because you are not going to recoup funds from people who are, well, nine million people who aren't working. Let's remember as well that this group includes mothers. It includes stay-at-home parents. It includes people, you know, who've or retired caring. at we, 52. Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carers. But a no, lot but of sick young people, people. But, but, many more than we've ever had before. And what are they doing to resolve that? You can't just say to people, right, get up, go back into work. Yesterday, I heard Mel Stride, talking at the, the Work and Pension Secretary, talking about, oh, well, we just need to, we need to do more NHS talking therapies. Now, I don't know if any of your viewers at home have ever done NHS talking therapies. That is not the gateway that, to, to getting people with chronic depression back into work. That's, so that's just diagnosing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, what do you think, James? Are they right to focus on this? Well, I think they're right to focus on the fact that we're spending too much on benefits. And I think they're right to focus also on the fact that the number of people who are claiming benefits and out of work and economically inactive has gone up significantly since COVID. That having been said, I, I would slightly agree with uh, Ava on the basis that just thinking that people are automatically going to go back to work when you've got to look at the causes. So, 
First of all, I, I do think that there's an answer, a case to answer for the number of lockdowns and what they did and why they did it. I also think that there's a case to answer for the fact that a lot of these people are economically inactive because the hospitals are not able to treat people. We've got people who are on hospital waiting lists, health waiting lists, You're and right. they are ill and they need to be, uh, get, hip, they need to be fixed before yeah. they can go back. Yeah. So let's look at some of the causes. Uh, I do think that we are spending too much money, but I think it's a very easy, almost low-hanging piece of fruit and argument to say we'll slash benefits and we'll look tough mm. on them, as opposed to why are we here in the first place? I should mention the other parties. Labour's back to work plan includes reforming statutory sick pay and making flexible working the default. The Liberal Democrats want to replace the sanctions regime with an incentive-based scheme to help people into work. We'll see if that, that does anything. Jack's in Cheshire. Hi, Jack. Good morning. So what, what do you think? They are looking at these numbers and thinking they just don't stack up. Well, to be quite honest with Jeremy, they're also picking on the wrong people. Um, I've got to go for a work assessment. I've got a prolapse disc in my back and I've got um, a blood clot in my heart. Uh, the blood clot in my heart can be seen on the scanner at the hospital and I can have printed off and they can, anyone can come with me and see that mm -hmm. for themselves, which really did give me some anxiety, let me tell you. Yeah. And a doctor once said to me, he said, you're a complainer of um, chronic back pain. He said, I'll tell you something now. He said, you're the first person said I've seen in 20 years. He said, he's actually got physical proof with your prolapse disc. Uh -huh. Well, I was thinking that the, I don't know if the clot stops you working, but the, the, the prolapse disc would stop you doing anything manual. Um, Jeremy, I struggle, and I mean genuinely struggle, to get a cup of coffee from my kitchen to where I sit actually within a metre and a half of the TV here, looking directly at you and your panel. Mm. And it, it can take me up to 10 minutes to do it. Really? And sometimes I can't manage to do it. I'd have to drink me a cup of coffee let on me, the, let on me the just, draining let, board. Let, let me bring... I hear you, Jack. Let me bring... Stay there. I hear... Let's, let's, let's talk to... you have got shaky you. hand syndrome as well. OK, um, well, yeah, that doesn't help. Ian in Lincolnshire, hi. What do you think? Someone like Jack can't work. Hi, Jeremy. Um, huge fan of the show, by the way. Okay. Um, so I, 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 I sympathise with um, with people with with physical illnesses, but um, I, I have um, anxiety, depression, and um, PTSD. And I think um, a, a lot of the time, it's people think that it's just like just in 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 your head. Um, I'm actually like my heart rate is is through the roof right now just just on this call but um my my illnesses um, my my ptsd and, and things like that are from a very traumatic incident when, when i was younger i won't go into details obviously on tv but um it, it, it can be de debilitating it really um it, it can stop me leaving the house it can stop me um just full-on Doing basically anything, I can I can have panic attacks and and things like that, um, and it can it can give you physical symptoms like a, a, a raised heart rate and, and stutters and and things like that. So, um, but, but you're saying that the that what you've got is just as real as Jack's prolapse disc and and blood clot. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's really hard to compare people's disabilities and illnesses and I don't really think we should we should be doing that but um yeah it, it, and and it's it's something I have absolutely no control over like I I, I I I suffered a traumatic incident I do think that we need much better mental health support I've been trying I've been on and off um with with community mental health services for um, like almost 15 years now, right. and no, the I'm waiting so list. It's, it's, you know what? This is. It's almost like dentistry now. Mental health. It's, it's that there's, there's, there's some great mental health services. There just aren't enough, and people can't access them. Thank you both. Well, yeah, Sorry. It's very easy, isn't it, to get if you're in a crisis. If you're in crisis, and the NHS is great for you. If you're, you know, suffering from your mental health. But if you've got chronic depression, then it's not helpful at all. And look, you know, what I feel for. Was it Jack there? Sorry, I just Yeah, Jack the is the physical I, and then Ian is the mental. Ian, sorry. Well, what I feel for Ian is that what a lot of people with, you know, mental health issues experience is that because they don't have a physical obvious disorder, mm. they can't point to it and say, look, this is broken, it needs to be fixed. They get questioned. I'm not saying that you were doing the questioning there, but, you know... If no, no, I know, I know, but I mean, you can, you can see how difficult. there will be some people scamming it because it's easier to feign... 
a mental know, health condition. But, they, but, you know, people do that for whiplash after a car crash, yeah, course, don't they? Yeah, of course. You know, I don't, yeah, I mean, we do see these... all sorts of... I know. We, levels we, of scamming, and, you're, yeah. and, and this is the point, is that we have to come up with a system that means that it can't be cheated. But we all mm. know, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a system where money is spent or anything else, there is always going to be, at the margin, some people who shouldn't be but are claiming. Yeah, of course, And yeah. the question is, how do you do it and fairly? Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to have a system, that, and it always happens with a crackdown, is that people who genuinely should be receiving benefits yeah. then are targeted okay. and have to go through. Let's take a break and then take more calls on whether you would support a crackdown on benefits. But Donald is in Glasgow. Hi, Donald. What do you think? Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Evelyn James. How are you? Okay. We're all good. Thank good. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm phoning up to say about Rishi Sunak and him cutting the benefits for people with mental health issues. Yes. Um, I've worked all my life, Jeremy, since I was a wee boy. I had a paper round and I've had 36 jobs. I've moved 28 times and I've worked hard, really hard. It wow. just so happened. I had, yeah, I had a mental breakdown in 2016. Okay. And I was put on, I suffered from hallucinations and auditory hallucinations as well. Okay. Um, now I'm on an antidepressant. Uh, antipsychotic, and I'm not the same person I used to be in 2016 now. Okay. I don't work. Um, I have two cats. One is a support cat. Um, now, if Rishi Sunak takes the benefits off of people like myself, who they say that can work, um, I wouldn't like to walk into an employer's and do a job and have to be sent home. Because mm. I would be sent home because I'm really no well. I do, yeah, but I mean, what, so you mean if he took the benefits off you, you would then have to go and at least go through the business of finding a job, but you'd last a day or something, would you? I would probably last a wee while, Jeremy, and then I would, I don't know what would happen, the stress, the, everything would get to me again. Um, don't, don't get me wrong, it's no fun being at home Watching the telly all day. I know that. I know that. Well, well hang on a minute. I mean, you're watching our show, so hopefully that is a bit of fun. But I hey. Jeremy, I watch this show every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, stay there, Donald. Let me just bring in... I'll, I'll come back to you, I promise. Darren is in Birmingham. What do you think there, Darren? You've got a great example. Donald has is, is been really heavily, heavily medicated, had got psychosis. Some people can't work. I, I do agree with partly with that, Jeremy. I do. But my wife's also, I'm a carer for my wife. Uh, my wife's got fibromyalgia and oh, she yeah. do also does have mental health problems. However, um, there's, other, there's other people out there that they say that, oh, I'm an alcoholic and I'm all these. Some of them, why don't they concentrate on them ones that have been out of there 15, 20 years and, you know, get on to them. Don't, I mean, it's always single mothers full-time mothers, and it's other mental health. What about the alcoholics? It's always the other people with mental health that are always picked on. Nobody ever Ava picks wants on alcoholics. A word. Well, sorry, Donna, what do you mean? Are you, are you saying that being an alcoholic isn't a real illness? Is that what you're arguing? Well, I think people, Jen, I think people put it on. I do. I've been to, when I had to well, sign on when I lost my job. That's a pretty evil thing job. to say. I have to say, Donald, with all due respect, I don't think that anyone wants to be an alcoholic. It's not like going to the pub and having a few drinks with your friends. I think it's a dependency that you can't unhook yourself from. No, but hold on. What I'm saying to you is, when I had to sign on before, when I was laid off from my job, I was told um, if you do something wrong, you were sanctioned. Now, I was told if an alcoholic comes in and they do no job search, they won't sanction them because they're worried about them committing crimes. Well, that's... Oh, no, I don't think... I don't think that that's true. I think that there would be a concern about their, their ability. If you, are, if you are inebriated because you have an illness and a dependency on alcohol, then I could imagine you probably wouldn't be able to do a job, sh job search. Donald, what, what about you? Do you feel that you, you look at other people who are claiming and you think they're not as bad off as you are? Jeremy, I understand that people are ill out there, right? Now, talking about alcohol, I was an alcoholic myself. Right. I kicked, I kicked the drink. I used to smoke cannabis. I kicked the, I kicked the smoking cannabis. And even still now, right, I'm mentally I'm still not right. I don't communicate, right? 
Uh, I don't fit in well with fathers. Um, there's just something happened to me in 2016 that not even a psychiatrist has given me the full breakdown of everything no, yet I because I'm going to take another psychiatrist at the moment and it's been five years since I've seen the psychiatrist. So they've left me alone and I, I haven't been sectioned or anything like that. And you understand alcoholics do have a problem, right? They're hurting, right? They're suppressing stuff. See, when you stop drinking, all that stuff comes out. So how mentally is that going to affect you? Understood. OK, Donald, thank you very much. And thanks, Darren, as well. Mandy in Kefili, hi. Do you think they need to do this hi, crackdown, uh, Mandy? Um, basically, I've always suffered with my mental health. Um, I'm an unpaid terror as well, um, which they haven't paid me for 10 months, I'd like to add. Um, they keep on saying they lost the phones. Um, I'm caring for my dad now, but before I cared for my mother for a number of years, I had to pack in work. Uh, people don't realise what it's like that sometimes you're speaking normal and people think that you're all right. And deep down inside you're dying. And um, when you go outside the door, I mean, I got rushed into hospital with expected heart attack and the palpitations was on the, the heart monitor and everything. And I have actually fainted with panic attacks as well. I fed this in and just, so the doctor said, it's, it's your head, it's your mind shutting off the body. That's why yeah. I got the faints. So, so are um, you are you on benefits though, or it sounds like you're not though, because you're you you got carers allowance, have you? Well, carers allowance, but they messed up that so far. When I I uh, discontinued it for my mum, and I've gone on it for my dad, and even a friend of filled in forms, and he still let me on and received them. Um, I'm on another benefit then because my nerves to back up the carers because it's not a lot of carers and I'm not having a lot of money anyway. Understood. Maddie, OK, thank you. I'm, we're getting so many people who are just, just really struggling with life. It's just a reminder of what's, what's out there. Maria is in Southampton. How are you doing? Oh, good morning, Jeremy. Yes, fine. Thank you. Yourself? Uh, yeah, fine. I don't know whether the, the, the government or somebody needs to look at these numbers and say, I'm sorry, they're just too high. We can't be carrying this many people. Yes, um, I agree. Um, I do receive universal credit. I'm a part-time worker. Um, however, I am changing that uh, very shortly, as from the 1st of July, to work full-time. I feel it's really important to um, work when you can. Um, and I think it's very important for the younger generation to see uh, that work is important and that to be able to do things in life, you need to work hard for them. There have been times recently when I've not been able to work and I've appreciated some help, um, but I wouldn't have wanted to get into that rut of feeling that I was receiving support and I wasn't trying my hardest to get work. Mm. Um, what I'm sort of dealing with right now is I'm getting called by uh, Universal Credit, the Job Centre, on a weekly basis to come in for a work search review. And I've explained to them and showed them I have a contract for a new job. I do not need to keep coming in. Please focus on other people. I do not need to receive You've the support it. any You've longer. You've done the thing you, they want you to do and they're still yeah, chasing but you. Absolutely. Um, I had a work search review last Wednesday. Um, I, I um, only work part-time you know, for this week. So they've called me to come in again this Wednesday. And I said, you don't need me. I just need to go to work. We have to go to our break. But thank you. And it's, yeah, the bureaucracy of, of that is like sort of strangling, isn't it? After the break, is it up to schools to potty train?